Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another 1v1 here. We have Klotz and Flup duking it out on this beautiful looking moon right now. I'm going to hop straight in here and resume recording. One small goes. step for man. One giant explosion for mankind. There we go. So zooming out and we have Flup by the South Pole already getting building and looking up the North Pole now we have Klops in this huge open region with so much metal so much metal to expand to and hardly any form of geographical advantage he's out in the open so uh, Klops is going to be incredibly unpredictable in this one he'll probably start to expand south and eastwards to try and claim as much of this huge amount of metal as he possibly can however looking down at Flup <laughs> we uh, can see that the expansion is probably going to take the north and east and maybe a little bit to the west as well um, but metal sites seem to be sort of a lot more sparse for Flup than they are for Klops although it is a moon planet so I might not have seen them straight away and I really struggle to see metal on moon planets Apologies for this. It looks as though Flop actually has quite a bit of metal in the near vicinity. So we'll see, as I say, the expansion to here and then up to here as well. So this will probably consist of the main of Flop's base. Whereas Klops has got all of this region right here. And Klops already has a vehicle factory, getting a fabricator, going straight away. The command, I'm not really sure what he's doing. He's going to go for some metal again. And uh, coming back down to Flop, who has already got a vehicle factory, getting out some spinners. An interesting early strategy there. He's got a fabricator, a skitter, and now a spinner. Maybe trying to counter some air raids or some scouting raids, all of which are possible on a reasonably large scale map like this one. This is quite big for a moon, so we'll just have to see what happens playing out between these two players. More fabricators coming in from Klops who will continue to build up their econ and their fabricators and then probably begin uh, to get more vehicle factories and more ants as the game progresses. Looking back down at flop again we see the skitter beginning to take some ground moving around getting a little bit of scouting and uh, Klop's probably been quite unpredictable with the scouting here why would any scout look in the middle of a whole wide open region? Who would who would casually choose one? You know, you've got no geographical defences whatsoever. And that is probably why this getter is avoiding this whole massive region. Unless that is just the pathfinding being a little bit dubious. Indeed it looks as though it might have been because of the way the planet is constructed out of smaller regions to create the sphere in the pathfinding. The commander from Flup now going to continue to build up, and we've also got a air factory going up now. So while getting the spinners to counter any counter air, he is going to have that air advantage. First off, with some scouts, fireflies, maybe some early bumblebee bombing uh, raids as well. Klops getting a similar idea now as well, actually getting an air factory going up, probably for some scouting hummingbirds and almost definitely some bumblebee worker raiding. Commander going to continue to build up energy now as well while fabricators focus down on the fab factories and mechs. Getting another vehicle factory up now as well. So, And there's the bumblebee from Klopp so we'll see some early bumblebee raids on some fabricators almost definitely. From uh, Flup instead we see a firefly probably being followed up by uh, another one and then a hummingbird following that or just going straight for the hummingbird there's the hummingbird right there while well, the commander continues to build up this metal in this region and ants begin to roll off the production line and the skitter is a little bit close to Klops's base now is he going to go the right way and find the spawn it's debatable but we also see Klops expanding down here claiming as much mechs as possible at this point it looks as though the skitter is going to see Klops' base is he going to do so before he gets bombed out is he going to see these bombers being produced he might well do but if he meets that commander first he will get destroyed before he sees what is being produced from the air factories he's now seen Klops' spawn and he's diverting himself away from the commander there and in comes the Firefly going to try and kill that Skitter. 
And there's the bomber as well, so he'll have seen the bomber, he'll have realised the threat from that, and he'll be wanting to get up many hummingbirds as soon as possible. I doubt he will have seen this vehicle factory spam, which is beginning from Klops, but that is certainly a start for Flup, whereas Klops, as of this point, does not know where Flup has spawned. So looking down, we can see that Flup is going to continue to get up some energy, and then probably begin to expand to these mechs locations here, by the south. And these ants probably going to build up and maybe skirt around, maybe using a flank to try and take out those factories. But it will be wise if Flup can keep an eye out on all of this metal using maybe just an idle firefly or two or three or some idle skitters just sitting around, just keeping an eye on as much metal as possible. And Klops doing something of an interesting and quite impressive scouting pattern here, just getting a bunch of planes scouting all the way to the South Pole from all different uh, lines of longitude. And uh, there goes the scout. Klops now knows where Flup's spawn is. And there's the raiding from the bomber. There goes the fabricator. He will not be building anything more today. And the hummingbirds are rallied. There goes the bomber before he can do any more damage. But that one worker in this early game is quite crucial in terms of that early game build up while Klops meanwhile is continuing to get up all of this metal freely no raiding whatsoever he's expanding in all different directions claiming tons of metal sites now probably almost getting almost up to 30 at this point he's definitely got uh, 10, 16, 20 yep he's got more than 30 metal sites now without a doubt I'd say closer to 33, 34 Whereas Flup, on the other hand, is re reasonably uh, turtling up and compact in this region with probably just about half of Klops. Klops is Klops. Klops and Flop <laughs> instead of Klops and Flup. Never mind, but uh, yes, half of that metal there while the commander continues to build up. This time going for a bot factory and Flup is going to continue with the hummingbirds going to go up and start a patrol pattern to try and eliminate any further bombing raids. Do we see any beginning to take shape? No, we don't. We do see a few being built though, uh, but what we do see now, interestingly, is an early tier 2 vehicle factory along with six other vehicle factories. So that is going to really ramp up the production value, especially because Klops can handle it with all of this metal he now has. He can probably afford almost up to 10 factories by now already, hence the early tier 2 rush. That firefly there, will the question is, will Flups have seen those bombers flying overhead? I don't think he has as they skirt around, going to take out and uh, probably skirting around and trying to take out some of this uh, econ field over here. I don't think Klops at this point has seen these factories here. But he will also see these ants, and if the ants aren't careful, they are going to suffer losses before they can do any damage. Hummingbirds moving over in their patrol. No, they go the other way! No, come back! The bombers are here! The bumblebees are here! You don't want to do that, and in fact, they'll probably come back and see that bomber and take him out! He's gone. And this bomber's going to move in and take out some ants, and no, he doesn't! The ants get him first. Good sniping there. Although it is automated, but now going back to Klops' base, we see a huge number of ants starting to take shape now. Along with that tier 2 factory that is almost completed and continuing to ramp up with more and more tier 1 vehicle factories. While he makes a few static defences over at this flank over here by this uh, rather separated econ field, relatively speaking. But at this point, Klops has grabbed a whole lot of the map. It's expanding rather linearly, if I'm honest, but in two directions. And it's going to be a little bit difficult to defend all of that at once. But let's be honest, if you suffer losses on one half, you still have all of this. And likewise, if you suffer losses down here, you still have all of this. But it is, uh, it'll be wise if Flup can maybe do a combined assault on all fronts. I mean, that's the ideal scenario. But if not all fronts, at least these two here, the northwest and the south. 
looking back at Flop's base, they do have a few ants, but nothing compared to what Klops can now start to produce. They have relatively even numbers right now, but as Klops continues with the production, it is going to get very much in favour of Klops very, very quickly indeed. Do we see any more bombing raids taking shape? No, we do not. Oh, actually, we do. We see them skirting around the other side this time as they were taken out from the west. And we also see some bots moving up, some scampers, maybe trying to take out a little bit of the uh, metal expansion. But round come the bombers. Those hummingbirds might just about nab them before they do much damage, but the spinner is also there as well. Spinner starts firing on that bumblebee. The spinner goes down. The hummingbirds come up. They take out the bumblebee. Can they come down and take out the other one? This is the question. Will Klops have seen it and be diverting him around even further? Because all we seem to have at the moment is hummingbirds on this sort of line here and over here, but nothing in between. Bomber almost getting free intelligence as he now starts his approach. But is he going to get taken out? Indeed he will. There he goes. Another waste of two bombers. Looking at uh, Flup's scampers now, however. They're running up between all of these ants. And it appears as though the base might be very un uh, lightly defended at this point. And indeed the scampers come back thinking, OK, we see all of this stuff over here. We want to avoid confrontation at all costs. What is Klops going to try and do at this point? I mean, the Scampers are going to run into some static defences and an ant rally point, so he is going to find a lot of trouble there. And he might even divert up north. Indeed, he does. It's a little bit strange pathfinding there. They've all spread out now. As long as they keep moving, they can do a lot of damage. But unfortunately, they were taken out by that ant spawn. And coming back down here now, in come the uh, strike force of ants from uh, Klops. The commander thinking, mm, should I get out of there? Should I go and take them on? He's going to go and take them on before I get too... No, he's not. He's going to run away, actually. Might be the wiser choice, considering there's almost an instant follow-up force ready there. And it looks as though Flup either lost a lot of forces or killed a fair few and lost some at the same time but at this point it would really be wise if they should really start taking out as much as they possibly can in terms of uh, the econ fields and the ant beginning to move in now taking out this tier 2 radar before much happens there in terms of the intel he's not gonna take it out he should have gone for the workers instead, but he's instead getting free intel. He's going to see these two tier 2 factories, and indeed there's now actually five in Klops base, with a, six indeed, and a load of tier 1 ants. This is really going to start to cause problems for Flup, because the production value difference is immense at this point of the game. Especially considering you only have one tier 2 vehicle factory and a few others. But ants have come in from the south without my saying so. What is going on? You've got to let me know so I can spectate you, Klops. What is this sneak attack? See, that is quite how good a sneak attack is if not even a spectator notices. And uh, from this very lightly defended front down here, these ants are just going to waltz in take out a bunch of economy, take out the radar and maybe even see the tier 2 vehicle factory and begin to do damage to that as well but down goes the energy it's time for the scampers and spinners to rush across but the spinners of course are anti-air they aren't going to do a huge amount to ground as long as they keep moving but they walked into the line of fire of the ants that was a little bit unwise and those scampers are just going to walk straight as well and therefore the ants can take them out very easily indeed as long as they keep skirting around they will do that damage can two scampers take out the entirety of that ant force I don't think so there they go no they do not we've got some more ants moving around from the west now with some scampers moving up. Klops really expanding to this entire metal region now. Captured almost all of it, apart from down here. But why would you need all of that when you have all of this? But then again, one can never have too much metal. Metal is, in this game, what bacon is in real life. One cannot deny it. One can never say no to it. Unless, of course, you're vegetarian, at which point I completely understand where you're coming from. Um, but 
that is <laughs> a completely wrong sort of topic of conversation because right now we're supposed to be spectating and casting Plateau Annihilation and I will get back to that right now. So, and in doing so, we see a lot of ants beginning to uh, clump together from Klops, and uh, they're going to start to move down south, and uh, they are really going to outnumber Flop at this point, who really, uh, this really wants to get up some static defences and focus down on doing so with all of these fabricators who are sitting idle. It might be wise to actually get these fabricators building those defences, especially if you know what you're up against at this point, and I think this might be curtains for Flop. I really do because that is a huge amount of ants for Flup's not so huge amount of defense. These fabricators rushing back to get away from the front lines, beginning to focus down on those static defenses. There they go. Econ can't quite handle that, but it is a tier 2 one, and these ants are going to start moving in now and really putting pressure on. I hope the commander is well away from there. Indeed he is. He's on the western front right now, building another air factory, maybe getting some bombers out for there, trying to do some damage because there isn't much anti-air support. But ants, don't forget, can shoot air. They are that multi-purpose unit at this point in the alpha and they are really clumping together now that is a large amount of ants right now all beginning to skirt down and across this is really going to be it for flop I fear down goes the metal down goes the radar down goes the factory that spawns idle fabs <laughs> or oh, not quite yet but there we go there it is and these are just going to continue to sweep into this base now, doing a huge amount of damage with constant follow-up forces and levelers now taking the taking the point. More hummingbirds moving in, trying to take out any form of anti-air defense while all of these remain idle. The ants are going to move over and shoot those as well before they can do any form of significant damage to any anti-air. There they go, all the ants taking them all out, free kills free kills all around as they just press through this base and really decimating it now scampers at this point really cannot do anything against an ample of that size unless you have a extraordinary number of scampers and the commander now is going to be left in the open he wants to get away from there he really wants to run indeed he's doing so the pathfinding isn't really in his favor right now he wants to go west due west not east i wonder whether he's almost conceding the game here running towards those ants no he's not the pathfinding there was a little bit dodgy, or maybe there was a command, a build command that had been queued up. The bomber going to take out one ant, and he's going to lose himself. The commander just sort of running around in circles like a headless chicken at this point, going, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? Because there's quite so many ants running around freely in the base. And indeed, here we go. Here's the final showdown. The commander is not going to stand a chance against this. Not a chance especially with levelers beginning to come in, and that is going to be the end of the game. Good game, Flops. Good game, Flop. And the GGs are called, and there goes the commander. Beautiful. So, in summary, looking at that, it was a little bit imbalanced. And when I say a little bit, I mean just a little bit more than a little bit slightly. Um, because <laughs> Klops had a huge amount of metal just waiting up for grabs here, way away from Flup's spawn, while Flup didn't really have a lot of metal in their spawn, and I think uh, the choice of spawn is pretty much crucial. I mean, Flup did begin to expand a little bit more towards the end there, but nowhere near as much as Klops did. But then again, why would you, you know, expand and leave yourself quite so thin He's stretched, especially when you have to expand that far to get some metal, whereas Klops, it was all within reach, and he used it perfectly with rally points to defend, and the odd static defense up as well in the initial stages of that expansion. And because of that, he moved to Tier 2 early, getting the advantages of the Tier 2 Econ. All of this over here, look, T2 Max, T2 Max, T2 Max, T2 Energy, T2 Energy, T2 Power, la 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 la, and T2 Factories everywhere to be seen at this point because of that knowledge of the uh, wondrous bounties of the mech sites and continued production there completely outproduced Flup who I think was a little bit of a sitting duck at that point once Klops realized he could expand 
almost limitlessly and again he almost started to expand over to here as well at which point he could have done anything he wanted and he was doing anything he wanted regardless so there is your summary for that and uh, thank you for watching don't forget to like or drop a comment and also subscribe for a lot more coming your way very soon and I've mentioned in my previous videos about some other special ones coming up very soon that subscribers will be very interested in watching because it is for you guys so other than that thanks again for watching make sure you stick around for a lot more content coming soon and as always have a great day